Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Um, today's big question for everybody is, should I buy a modified Range Rover L322? Now, the reason I asked this question is because thanks to all of your help um, and the videos I've made so far, I've managed to hone down on exactly which Range Rover I'm looking for. So it was always going to be the L322. Thanks to all your help and feedback, I've landed on exactly the type I want to go for. So the setup I'm thinking of purchasing is the 2006 to 2009 4.2 petrol supercharged V8. Um, and there are several reasons why I've landed on this model, which I'll get into shortly. Um, but for now, I just want to know your advice. Should I be going for a modified one or should I be looking for something as close to factory spec as possible? Now, the reason for this question is, as I've mentioned in previous videos, I live just outside of London. And um, London is a very kind of like, you know, affluent global city where, you know, Range Rovers for many people are toys. And therefore, there are lots of kind of Range Rovers out there which are people's personal fantasies. They've modified them. They, you know, done things to them, put particular things on them. Um, a lot of um, old models, 15 year old examples in particular, are completely bespoke to somebody's specific taste. But I'm not sure if that is kind of like, you know, going against the whole concept of a classic car. And my thoughts on the Range Rover L322 is that it is a modern classic. Um, one of the reasons I want to buy one, it's not just to take my uh, modern family um, to Italy and back four times a year um, and maybe do a little bit of overlanding and camping. It's also um, a, a speculative investment almost because I think they are beautiful. Um, I already, in my mind, feel like they're iconic, maybe because I've been exposed to so many images of them um, because I'm always consuming Range Rover content, especially the L322. Um, but, you know, I think it is a modern classic and I think those lines are um, very much aligned with the whole Range Rover heritage. Um, and also, I feel like, you know, um, this iteration, the L322, um, is just so beautiful and it's along the lines, in my mind, um, of the Porsche 911, which is also another stunningly gorgeous car, which I'd love to perhaps, you know, one day own or just even drive and kind of like, you know, um, chill with for a bit. Um, or the Beetle, um, classic and new. So classic lines, absolutely beautiful. Um, and I'm buying one, um, not just because the incredible value they offer at the moment. So the type I'm going for, um, you know, the average price is probably around, you know, um, £8,000 sterling. So, you know, it's incredibly affordable for what was once, um, uh, you know, a top of the range car. Um, I watched a, a video the other day of somebody reviewing their L322 autobiography and they were literally saying it's like a Rolls-Royce on years. Now, this is from many years ago when Rolls-Royce and Bentley didn't have 4x4s. Lamborghinis didn't have a 4x4. It was all about the Range Rover um, as the premium and only really kind of ultra luxury um, SUV. But one of the reasons I love it, and I think this is one of the reasons that many people love the Range Rover L322 and all Range Rover models, um, is that the utility they provide. Like, this can be a luxury car, but it can also be a farm vehicle. Um, and I love that. I love the idea of both. Like, right? maybe when I start living the good life once I've retired, um, then this car will come in handy. And that there is the point. Like, I want to buy this Range Rover and I want to keep it for a very long time. And even if it becomes a classic car and a collectible and, you know, shoots up in value, um, I still want to drive it, um, you know, for my occasional holidays and road trips. So, you know, with that in mind, um, should I really be thinking about buying one as close to factory spec as possible or going for people's um, modifications? And, you know, the real reason for this is there are a lot of Range Rovers out there with all sorts of weird and wonderful modifications. And I could buy one of those and most of them I could live with. Some of them I absolutely couldn't. But most of them I could live with the modifications. But are these modifications going to devalue um, the ultimate car if what I think will happen and it becomes a classic. Um, and, you know, the other thing as well is that deep down, I'm a bit of a boy racer. So this is a term we have in the UK for normally young people, actually, who are really into cars and like into mapping out engines, etc. And, you know, um, when I was a teenager, I used to buy a magazine called Max Power. 
Um, and I was all into the mapped out kind of like, you know, engine and exhaust. And even now when I walk down the street and, you know, around where I live um, out in the sticks, you do seem to get a lot of um, boy racers around. Um, and when I hear those engines popping, uh, you know, everybody in the streets are just kind of like, oh, what's going on? But inside, I'm just like, yes, amazing. Love it. Um, I do think I'm a bit too old for that sort of situation now. And they're normally on small cars like Fiestas. Um, but, you know, and I want a big luxury car that I can take on my road trips. Um, I need my dog to be comfortable. I want to be comfortable if I'm driving for 12 hours. Um, to allow me to get this, my partner will absolutely need to be comfortable. Um, you know, so it, what do I do? Like, do I go for whatever's available? Um, and what seems to be coming up are these kind of like modified cars. Or do I just hold out, have a bit of patience and try to find one as close to factory spec as possible? Um, you know, is that just going to be much less of a headache in the long run, considering that this is hopefully, well, it is a long term um, proposition for me. Um, and also, you know, um, the fact is that um, I do like a good modification, like those murdered out cars, like, you know, um, I'm <laughs> beautiful. I absolutely love that. I don't think I'd actually be able to find one in my budget that was completely like blacked out and stuff. And I don't actually know if I really want something that draws that much attention. Um, I do want something beautiful, but I also want to be a little bit discreet. I want to be able to, you know, shimmy down the motorway to Italy and back unnoticed. Um, and, you know, without event, um, I want the event to be the comfortable ride. Um, so, yeah, let me know what you think. Murdered out Range Rover, if I can find one. A massively modified Range Rover, if I can find one. Or as close to factory spec. My instincts tell me factory spec is the way to go in a really kind of like beautiful, um, timeless colour, um, like green or blue or kind of grey. Um, ideally not black, although if it was completely murdered out, then yes, 100% black, everything. Um, but you know, am I, am my instincts right here? Like, do you think I should be, um, getting one as close to factory spec? Um, uh, because in the long run, like, you know, um, I, I don't see, um, many Range Rovers that have been, the classic Range Rovers that are, that is, that have been completely modified, um, just renewed and revitalised. Um, like the Kingsley one is one I absolutely love actually. So, um, and they're not really exactly 100% spec, the original spec, but they are updated to ultra luxury standards. They're also incredibly expensive, but that's okay. Nice work if you can get it. Um, and then just to say the reason I've landed on this 4.2 supercharged is because of the price. So yes, it's a 15 year old car. I'm told by good authority um, on all of the blogs um, and in all the comments that that particular 4.2 supercharged V8 Jaguar engine is bulletproof. And um, there, there's lots of evidence out there to suggest that they can run up like in excess of 300,000 miles on the original engine. Um, so that instills me with a lot of confidence. But because we face these massive economic headwinds, and as everybody knows and everybody rightly points out, like Range Rovers just completely eat up all your money. Um, you know, it's probably best to just go with something um, as affordable as possible in the outset and then use that cost saving to pay my electricity bill, maybe, or, you know, just kind of um, um, pay for the um, inevitable maintenance that will kind of like, you know, be coming along um, every year. So um, that's where I am, guys. Um, you know, 4.2 V8 supercharged 2006 to 2009. Um, if I can find one, should I just go with a modified one? Um, because that's likely to be the first thing I can find. Um, there are lots of modified Range Rovers out there, especially where I live. Or should I just really be holding out and make that extra effort and go for something that's kind of as close to factory spec as possible? Classic, um, gorgeous, effortless. Um, let me know your thoughts. If you're enjoying the videos, please do um, click like or subscribe even. Um, I will be making many more videos once this Range Rover finally comes. Um, they are not um, the type I'm looking for. There just aren't that many out there at all. Um, so, you know, hopefully these videos will be replaced very shortly um, with something that is a lot more interesting because I know everybody just wants to see a car. I want to see a car. I want to drive that car. Um, so watch this space.